Okay, so we've understood the basics of shifting curves and new equilibrium points when curves shift. Right, when it comes to an exam question, right, how can we answer the question properly? Now these types of questions tend to be worth 8 marks. They can be worth less, but normally worth 8 marks. Okay, you normally get 3 marks for drawing a diagram, 2 marks for simply just explaining what you've drawn, and 3 marks for commenting on the impact of what you've drawn. Okay, so normally these questions will start with comment on the effect of whatever factor might be shifting in demand or supply, or both. Okay? So when you see comment, you need to evaluate, you need to talk about the impact and how it depends on certain things. I'm going to go through the entire technique with you now. Okay, so we know the basics of, of one curve shift. So if demand shifts to the right, price will increase, quantity will increase. If supply shifts to the right, price will fall, quantity will increase. We know when one curve shifts, what happens. That's very simple. I'm going to focus on when two curves shift on this video, but in truth, everything I'm going to say applies if only one curve was shifting anyway. Okay, you'd still go through this exam technique in exactly the same way, but with two curves shifting, I can become the most difficult type of question, and the analysis and the evaluation really does come into, come into fall uh, with two curves shifting at the same time. So let's assume that demand and supply were shifting simultaneously. So let's say for some reason demand, demand has shifted to the right. Okay, so maybe there's been an increase in the price of a substitute good. Maybe there's been a reduction in the price of a complement good. Maybe a rise in income, reduction in interest rate, okay, a good report on something. Whatever it might be, demand has shifted to the right. Okay, so we'll indicate that by a right arrow. Okay, so that's what's happened first of all. Now, if that was the only thing that happened, if there was no effect on supply at all, well then you would draw an increase in quantity and an increase in price and stop there. Okay, then you would start your analysis and your evaluation later. But, I've just said there's a simultaneous effect on supply. Well let's say at the same time supply has shifted to the left. Maybe there's an increase in the price of, uh, increase in the price of raw materials, which is increased cost of production. Increase in the price of commodities, maybe. Uh, maybe there's been a reduction in productivity. Maybe there's an indirect tax put on this good. Whatever it might be, supply shifted to the left. Okay, so let's draw that one too. Okay. Now I'll also state regulation. Okay, regulation can also shift the supply. So an increase in regulation, maybe a ban on something, a ban on um, smoking in certain areas might reduce supply. Maybe there's been um, legal restrictions put on the production of a good, in which case supply shifts to the left. So Regulation can also shift the supply curve to the left. So maybe that's what's caused it. Anyway, supply shifts to the left for some reason, in which case we again show an arrow to the left. Now we know that the new equilibrium price occurs when the new demand curve equals a new supply curve, because both are shifted now. So a D2 meets S2 is all the way up here. Label these points, call that P2 as an increase in price. And down here, okay, you can label that Q2. Right, straight away, you can tell something's iffy here, and that's the point, good. Alright, so one thing that can't be disputed is the change in price, the price will go up, okay, so new price and upward arrow, always show the effects on price and quantity with arrows, very important to do that, okay, and the arrows for the shifts as well, very important to do that as well. Good, okay, so that's the diagram, you normally get three marks for that diagram, it's a simple diagram, one mark for showing the initial equilibrium, one mark for shifting the curves correctly, and one mark for a new equilibrium. Okay, sometimes you might get four marks for this. Okay, but do the basics right and you'll get your marks for the diagrams. Your analysis, your next chunk, should just basically to say what's happened on the diagram. So as a result of an increase in advertising, demand has shifted to the right to D2. As, an increase, uh, as a result of an increase in the cost of production, supply has shifted to the left from S1 to S2. The new equilibrium can be seen at price P2, Q2. Okay, where well, the price has increased from P1 to P2 and the quantity has reduced from Q1 to Q2. Okay, the new equilibrium, okay, the equilibrium has changed from P1, Q1 to P2, Q2. All you're doing is just essentially saying what you've done on the diagram, but you need to say that. So you'll get marks, okay, you'll get marks for, well, maybe you'll get marks for saying the demand has shifted from D1 to D2 and S1 to S2. Unlikely, but potentially, I've seen that in the past. But most likely, the marks will be for stating that as a result of these shifts, the price, the new equilibrium is formed at P2Q2, where the price has increased from P1 to P2, one mark, and the quantity has reduced from Q1 to Q2, 
one mark, okay? Normally for that. A new equilibrium is formed at P2, Q2. Even saying that, you could get a mark. Okay, so just write everything that you show in the diagram. Write it concisely below. Now, one thing you could say, which you don't have to say, is how excess demand or excess supply has been rationed. So if you've just shifted one curve, let's say demand is shifted to the right, you can then say, well, as a result of demand shifting to the right, there's been an excess demand at price P1, which causes an upward pressure on price, therefore the price increase from P1 to P2, quantity increases from Q1 to Q2, the excess demand has been rationed via an increase in price. You can say something like that if you want to, but that's not necessary. You just need to say the new prices, the new quantities, and that will get you marked. So that's your analysis, just stating what you show in the diagram, but in written form. That's really important. And that's why I like to put arrows down. So when I do change prices and quantities, I like to put arrows next to it because it forces me to talk about it. I then remember to talk about the changes in prices and quantities. If I forget the arrows, I might not do that. Okay? So good, you do that, and that's only worth two marks. Sometimes only worth one mark, but normally two marks. Now, the last chunk of the question, the actual comment part of the question, is probably the most important part. Okay? It's, it's the area where most students lose marks, and it's an area which is normally very poorly done. In truth, if you look at these three points and memorize these three points, you'll always get your full marks for the evaluation side of the question. Okay? Now, again, normally three marks for this part of the question, and if you talk about one of these points in detail, you can gain all three marks. The best thing to do is just talk about all three. Okay? All three, all the time, and you can guarantee your marks for this part of the question. All right, now the comment part of the question is very simply talking about what impact, okay, what the impact of the demand and supply shift depends on. Right. Well, the impact of the shifts on price and quantity depends on the extent to which demand and supply shift. If you just shifted one curve, well, it depends on the extent to which you've shifted that one curve. Okay, for example, I'm going to do it a different colour because it's going to get messy now. If I shifted demand, okay, hypothetically further to the right, all right, if I shifted further to the right, well, then quantity would have increased. Okay, or if I shifted supply more to the left, okay, quantity would have decreased further, the price would have increased further. Okay, so the extent to which I shift the demand and supply curve is very important. Then give an example. For example, if I shifted the demand curve further to the right, the quantity would have actually increased rather than decreased. Okay? So that's important. Right? The extent to which the curve shifts, whether it shifts more or less, either way, give an example. And the impact also depends on the elasticity of demand and supply. If you're not sure what that means, look at my video on elasticity of demand and supply, and it'll make sense. Okay? It depends on how steep these curves are drawn. Okay? If I draw my curves more steeply, the effect on quantity would have been very, very small, whereas the effect on price would have been much larger. So again, talk about how the impact depends on the elasticity of demand and supply. And they give an example. For example, if the demand curve was drawn more steeply, all right, the price effect, the price change, would have gone up more, more greatly. Okay, so that's what you have to do. Explain the elasticity of demand and supply, how the effect depends on the elasticity of demand and supply, and then say hypothetically, if I draw my curves more steeply, so if demand was more drawn more inelastic and supply was drawn more inelastic maybe, how would that have changed the final effect? Okay, talk about that. And the last point to evaluate, say, well, we've kind of assumed citrus parameters here again. Even though we think we've dropped it because we're shifting curves, we're actually only isolating these two effects. Okay? The one factor that shifted demand to the right, maybe advertising. And the one fact that shifted supply to the left, maybe a rise in commodity prices. What about all the other factors that could have affected supply and demand? We've kind of neglected those a little bit. We don't have much information about those factors. But surely they could have also had an impact on demand and supply. Maybe the extent to which demand and supply shifts also de depends on the effects of the other factors. All right, so all of these points are very important to evaluate. All right, and in truth, Without knowing these points perfectly, without understanding the effects of these points perfectly, we don't fully know the effect on price and quantity. And the beauty about two curves shifting at the same time is that the effect on one variable will always be ambiguous. So in this case, we know that the price will increase. That's, that's a given, we know that. But the effect on quantity is much less certain. Okay? If you draw a demand shift to the right and a supply shift to the left, you might have seen a quantity increase. 
You might have seen no change in quantity. You might have seen the quantity fall much greater. Okay? In truth, the effect on quantity is very ambiguous. And similarly, any time you're shifting two curves, the effect on one variable will always be ambiguous. Have a go. Try shifting two curves in different directions. And you'll see that the effect on one of these variables will always be ambiguous. You'll never be certain as to what happens. And that means this evaluation is really useful to talk about. So make sure you fully understand how to talk about these three. And again, in your exam, talk about all three. Don't miss out anyone. Talk about all three. They're all relevant to your demand and supply curve shifts. Okay? So this is a very easy question, but often many students don't get full marks on it. So now you know how to get full marks. Diagram, brief analysis. Okay, just explain what you showed on the diagram. Your change in prices and quantities and changes in equilibriums. And then your evaluation using these three points. The impact on price and quantity depends on these three points. And you'll get your full marks. Okay? Do me proud. Answer these questions properly. See you next time. Thank you.